What's up, boys? Birds in the Trap MMA. I'm back at it. Sorry if my voice sounds a little weird, okay? I completely lost it last night when Pereira won the fight. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't really able to talk the same after. But, with that being said, guys, UFC 295. God damn, man. It blew all my expectations. It was, it was a phenomenal card. I watched every single fight, and um, I have a few videos I want to make about it. Uh, but I'm just going to start off right now with a full card recap, alright? Um, the, the prelims were pretty good, man. The prelims were weird. They had a they had a theme going. It was either a lackluster decision or like a round one KO. You know what I mean? So we got the... We got the oh, oh, and not to mention, guys, I went 8, 4, and 1 on this card. Pretty good, okay? If I can, if I can get a positive record, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Because uh, there was a draw, so move, moving on from that, guys. Uh, Jamal Emmer's first first minute knockout. Um, it was the first fight on the card. Good good one to get the ball rolling. And uh, little did we know we were in for a ton of first minute knockouts. <laughs> um, the next two fights: Joshua Van um, versus Kevin Borjas and John Castaneda versus Ke Kang Hyung Ko. They were all right, you know what I mean. Nothing too crazy. Um, I honestly don't have much to say about it because my mind got so I don't know my mind is like clouded after the main and co-main event man but Jared Gordon okay I picked Jared Gordon to get a boring ass decision but a fucking knockout like in the clinch just let a combo rip knockout like where did Jared Gordon get this power man Mark Madsen that was only his second loss ever he's never lost by KO so, I mean, look, that surprised the shit out of me. Not even gonna lie. It was cool to see, though, man. I like Jared Gordon. If you guys saw my prediction video, you know that I picked Jared Gordon because I live in Vegas and I ran into him at a bathroom. So, <laughs> so that's why I picked Jared Gordon. Um, moving on to the prelims. Um, uh, Alright, this pick did not pay off, guys. I tried to pick Roosevelt Roberts, but, uh, you know, Rebecca got the job done. I, I, I kind of saw it coming. I just thought maybe Roberts can catch him really quick with his length and his power, but it didn't happen. It's all good. Um, but Lupita Godinez versus Tabitha Ricci. Uh, I, I saw a 30-27 Godinez. I don't know how this can be a split decision. And I think, to make it even worse the split decision was a 30-27 to Ricci. That was just absolutely... They, they were smoking. It says zero knockdowns here because they weren't like super powerful knockdowns, but I know that they knocked each other down a, a few times. I actually think Ricci knocked down Godinez more, but Godinez looked way better out there. Not gonna lie, I was expecting a finish, but she was fighting someone better than a lot of her competition. So it is what it is. She didn't get the finish, but she got the win. Um, still looked good doing it. She has a good ability of imposing her will. But with that being said, so did Ricci. Both of them are pretty good. I have to give it to him. All right. Now, Steve Ersegg versus Alessandro Costa. Uh, this fight was kind of boring. <laughs> I picked Steve Ersegg, but, um, I mean, he kind of just, he kind of just floated around out there, you know? Costa's game plan, it had to be you know, to make the fight messy and just try and catch him in an exchange when he's not expecting it. And Steve Erzak, he didn't really play into it, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it was just a pretty lackluster fight, not gonna lie. Um, but still, nonetheless, good win for Steve Erzak. Um Moving on to the main card, guys. Every fight was a KO. And I swept it. Aside from the Aspinall fight, but we'll get into that. All right, Diego Lopez versus Pat Sabatini. I was watching this card with my friends, and I was saying, "Man, Lopez is good. I think he's gonna drop him and submit him." I did not think he would just drop him and beat the fuck out of him. Like Diego Lopez, man, you think of him as a jujitsu guy? He can strike too. He has power. So, uh, I want to see him fight a top 15 next. I think he's phenomenal. Um, and, I mean, 
this guy has three fucking UFC fights, and he's like a fan favorite already. Like, he got a pop when he walked out. So, I mean, good for Diego Lopez, man. I think everyone just likes to see someone come in on short notice and, like, make it really competitive. It's like the perfect underdog story, you know? It's a good way to get the fans behind you. Um, moving on up the card. Matt Frivola versus Benoit St. Denis. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> um, ah, what is there even to say, man? Benoit is a tank. He's a beast. He is that good. Um... I was a little worried there in the beginning of the fight when I saw him pulling guillotines. I think that's what he did, right? He, like, pulled a guillotine, and I was like, oh, come on. All right, not officially, but, like, he went to his back, and I was like, I don't like that. You know, I'd rather these guys be on the feet, but he made his way back up to the feet, and within, like, 10 seconds of getting on the feet, he lands the nastiest head kick on Frivola. It was literally perfect. Frivola was like circling out against the cage and Benoit just boing, lights out. Um, in my opinion, probably the best KO on the card. It was, it was spectacular. So I love Benoit St. Denise, man. I think he's going to go pretty far. I think he will lose eventually, obviously, but I think like he'll be the type of guy to take a loss and then start winning again. So even if he loses like his next fight, for example, I still have high hopes for him. I think he'd bounce back and, like, still... I think he's going to get pretty highly ranked, man. I don't know if I want to say future champion yet. Just because he does have a very war style. But, I mean, he is damn good. So, I like Benoit St. Denis. Um, definitely got to watch out for. Tons of finishes. And they're spectacular, too. So, moving on. We got Jessica... Oh, I got this one wrong, too. My bad, guys. Um, Jessica Andrade versus Mackenzie Dern. What the fuck is Mackenzie Dern doing? Why aren't you going for takedowns? She's just sitting there, dilly-dallying out there, just... You know, uh, you know, she's just coordinating the orchestra with her hands on the feet, trying to, you know, play with Jessica Andrade. Now listen, Mackenzie Dern was hitting Jessica Andrade. Okay, she was. But the difference was, every time Andrade would hit her, she would react. She would drop. And I think there is, f yeah, four fucking knockdowns in this fight. And Dern went for takedowns, but I just... Look, I can get a pick wrong. It's alright. I can settle with it. Fights are 50-50. I can't stand when my pick is just a fucking idiot out there, Okay? Mackenzie Dern should have played it safe the first few rounds, and then that third round start to grapple more if she couldn't already because she shot takedowns and couldn't get them. I just wish she would have game planned a little better. I don't know. She thought she was, she thought she could strike, and she paid the price, man. Jessica Andrade back in the win column. It's crazy. She's two and three in her last five fights this year. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> you know what i mean um yeah that's just crazy anyways moving on co-main event tom aspinall puts away sergey pavlovich quick damn i did not see that coming um i picked pavlovich i actually picked pavlovich to do exactly what aspinall did to him <laughs> but um tom aspinall is that guy there is nothing we can say anymore man um like who the fuck is beating this guy I would pick Aspinall to beat Jones. He's way faster. He's a natural heavyweight and has way more power. Um, I would even... No, I'm not going to say what I was about to say. <laughs> you know, the only guy who I think can rival Tom Aspinall isn't in the UFC. And I'm talking about Francis Ngannou, okay? We don't have to worry about Ngannou versus Aspinall fight. It would be sick. I guess the fans would want it. I shouldn't say we... But as far as Tom Aspinall, he doesn't have to worry about fighting in Ghana. So I, I think he is the best heavyweight in the world. I don't see anyone beating him. He's so young. He's so fast. I'm going to make a bold prediction for you guys. All right. I think he'll go down as the heavyweight goat. If, if the bar is Stipe, who has three title defenses over 
dinosaurs, let's be real. I get that when he fought them, they were good, but nowadays we look at it and, you know, all we see in Sipe's resume is the title defenses, not necessarily who they're against. Um, the Nganu win is good, the DC win is good, but, um, and he's, you know, Stipe was a two-time champion, so he has that for him too. Guys, three amazing title defense, two amazing title defenses from Aspinall after he gets promoted to Undisputed. I think he's the heavyweight go. I think he's going to clean shop for a long time. It's going to take someone else on Aspinall's level to to win and I don't see anyone anyone on his level I think maybe him and Pavlovich will fight again and I like Pavlovich man it, it sucked to see but I don't know where he goes from here honestly because now that momentum is halted now he's been cracked if I'm Pavlovich you go back to the tubby, tubby guys All right, you ask for a Tied to Ivasa rematch. <laughs> um, yeah, co-main event. It is what it is. Main event. I scored the first round to Pereira. I know a lot of people um, were going Yuri with that. I saw the verdict scorecard. Majority of people went Yuri. What the fuck did he do with that takedown? Literally nothing. Literally took him down and just sat on top of him. Pereira did a really good job at neutralizing Yuri on top. He didn't let him get anything off, um, which I was worried because, you know, something with Yuri is the elbows. I was worried Yuri was just going to start slicing him open with elbows, but it didn't happen. Pereira's grappling is, um, well, I shouldn't say his grappling, but his grappling defense, it's getting really, really good, man, um, and we can't take away from it. Um, now, with that being said, I want Pereira to hit the guillotine one day. <laughs> it would be so funny. And I almost thought he like was going to do it. But if you guys remember the Jan Bolhovich fight, he had Jan in the guillotine. Imagine if he tapped out Jan within like 50 seconds. Imagine if he tapped out Yuri within like a few minutes with a fucking guillotine. It'd just be funny. All right. Um, so, yes. First round to Pereira. The leg kicks were insane. Dude, Jamal Hill. Good luck. You're coming off of a leg injury. You want to fight Alex? I'm picking Alex to TKO him with leg kicks. Honestly. Like, I think Pereira might go on a bit of a run, man. Unless someone like Ankaliyev makes it back to a title shot. Which, let's hope he doesn't. I fucking hate Ank... Well, okay. Don't come after me. I don't hate Ankaliyev. I just don't want him in the title picture. He does literally nothing. Um, with that being said... Round two, Yuri looked really good. His movement, you could tell it was labored, but he was getting some great combos off on Pereira. And even a few moments where I was like, oh, fuck, like he's going to knock Pereira out, my pick. Um, but Pereira just stayed calm in there, kept backing up. And who would have thought of Pereira as a counter striker? I get that he has counter KOs in his kickboxing record, but he's a guy that moves forward. That's when he's best. He just says, fuck it. And just lets Yuri back him up. Clean right hand. Puts Yuri right in position for a short left hook. That left hook was so short. I can't believe it. Literally, just a little. Like, he probably wasn't even a foot away from his body. It was absolutely incredible, man. I started to lose my shit. Let's talk about the stoppage. Was it a good stoppage? Yes. Was it an early stoppage? Yes. Mark Goddard should not be in championship fights anymore. He ruins way too much. Like, I might make a video about how many fights Mark Goddard has fucked up. Um, actually, I am going to do that. I'm going to make that next. Um, <laughs> but Mark Goddard, he calls off the fight because, because I don't know. Look, for what it was, I understand the stoppage, but I would have, with the magnitude and with Yuri being Yuri, I just wish we could have seen three more strikes. 
You know what I mean? Because maybe Yuri could have got out of that. I think Yuri's been hurt worse in his UFC career, and they haven't stopped it. I think Reyes put him out cold for a few seconds. I think Pereira put him out cold for one second. So <laughs> that's my point there, guys. But absolutely phenomenal card. I loved every fight on the main card. The prelims were stacked. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the recap video. Uh, I'm, I'm about to film that Mark Goddard video. That's probably going to come out uh, later in the week. And then I'm going to make a video about uh, the main and co-main. Um, so yeah, with that being said, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one. That video that I was talking about in my last video, that is going to be really good. Uh, I'm about to finish that one right now, and um, Monday or Tuesday. All right, so tomorrow or the next day, it'll be out, guys. See you all in the next one.